yo what's going on guys it's your boy the one back with more wuthering waves content and today joining with joining me in this video is life from life lessons we're doing the part two uh you guys enjoyed the last time we did a collab video is i think it's on my main page on the channel the video did insanely well um i'm, I'm pretty sure the video was with wuthering waves um be a uh, success or failure we covered that you guys had good feedback so we're back again to discuss the state of wuthering waves let's get it So um, I'm sure you've seen the the um, Black Shores stream. The, uh, I think it was a few days ago. What were your thoughts on that, man? Ah, uh, man, um, peak. Like, like it, it yeah. was. I had I, I not to say that I had high expectations per se. Like I just had like I was excited. Mm. I had um, my expectations were that they would improve. Yeah. Um, I can't say that whether they were like super high or whatever. It's just i was like i'm pretty sure that there's going to be an improvement um even when we looked at like how long it was going to be i think they said it was gonna be around 30 minutes so i was like okay well that means they're probably gonna like try to condense everything mm -hmm. and i ended up watching it like a couple times over because i just wanted to make sure that i didn't miss anything and i also was like yeah. talking to people when i was streaming and after watching it um even more recently um because i was like showing my wife I was just like, man, they really paced to this thing so well. Yeah. It's like a very well paced uh, stream. Like it was just like, mm. talk a little bit, video. Talk a little bit, video. Talk a little bit, yeah. video. And they like, packed, it was just yeah, and they packed a lot of information in there. It's like, like I even because I was gonna originally gonna make a video talking about uh, breaking down the stream, but I decided mm -hmm. last I decided last second to like scrap that. But like bullet point by bullet point, there was so many things um that they covered yes. in that 30 minutes like it's also a sign that they're listening to the to what we are and the community are saying as i'm sure you remember the first live stream um how the backlash was for that one where people weren't happy mm -hmm. where they were playing like those games and stuff and people were like we don't care about this just show us the game we want more of the game they completely scrapped all that they were like boom here's another thing boom here's another thing so straight into the action and i like that they, they respected your they respected our time because i think that last one was like like i think an hour and a half or two hours that that first live stream i can't remember but it was pretty long but this one mm -hmm. 30 minutes super super fast i like that i like that yeah very concise like i will be honest i didn't mind the last live stream but I also understand why I didn't mind it. And it's because as somebody who had played, you know, all the betas, I kind of already knew what I was getting into. One of the common things that I saw people were saying was like, this live stream was supposed to be the premier opportunity for them to show off a game to people who have no idea what it is. Yeah. And it definitely did not deliver mm -hmm. um, that the first time. Um, but yeah, this most recent one was like you said, it was very concise and like i said just not even just talking about like i said the fact of respect of the time but just the stuff that was in it mm. oh my gosh like i could go on for days about how cool that place looks um i love the vibe it's kind of bringing us closer to that aesthetic that i think brought a lot of people over to weather ways to begin with like kind of like the dark mysterious apocalyptic, sort of vibe yeah the apocalyptic thing yeah i get it exactly um, and even the music um for those of you all who were actually listening to the music um you know newsflash for anybody who doesn't know i actually majored in music in college and um the music is just something i always pay attention to and it had a very cyberpunk feel like blade runner cyberpunk mm, um yeah I and i'm that. really hoping that they bring that into the um the actual uh area yeah um so like we could we could talk for for like hours about that live stream because there was so much information in it um but i just wanted to get your your quick thoughts on that but um regarding like the the current state of the game one thing that has to be addressed i feel like is the revenue for the previous month because yeah. all, all the all the uh 
Wu is gonna die. Wu can never do anything. Like all those type of people who were silent with like the first couple of months when Wu was success was successful, and they were silent. Now they're piping up now because they had one bad month because it, you know it was a cool down month essentially, where the story needed to slow down, uh, things needed to cool down. You know, people needed to save their money. You know. Uh, and they need to, they, they need to slow down the story and everything um because people i don't know what it is i i feel like people nowadays they just they just want so much to consume so much content super super fast like they don't want anything to be spaced out like i don't know what i don't know what it is i don't know what it is maybe people have tiktok brain or something i don't know but people are like give just give me the content give me the content but like if they if they give it to you so fast then the quality is going to drop and i feel like people aren't aware of this they're just like give me this give me that give me that but they don't know that so much has to go into the the writing you know uh uh, uh the direction where they want the story to go you know it just it needs to make sense um so that's why i think personally it's a good thing that we got that um this cooldown period where the characters that that, that released weren't too crazy they weren't must summons um the story well, was one of them was one of them was literally a don't have to summon <laughs> yeah literally a don't I don't have to summon um I, I i really like that i really like that because it just it showed like they weren't just tra trying to chase money dropping banner after banner after banner of hype characters where they just you know you know what i mean but they just insanely pop up the power scaling make this character just insane for tower of adversity or whatever now they, they were like okay here's a free character here's a character that's good but you don't really need um i like that man so like what's your thoughts on the whole revenue situation yeah so i think um the best way to look at this it's it's very simple um it's is it okay if i name drop other games uh, no, other gacha games no problem this? man go, go crazy okay so i want to be very clear um this is a objective statement i'm making it is, does not have any personal opinions uh in it so try to to listen to what i'm saying for what i'm saying um a lot of people have this idea and i said this last time actually that you know every game needs to be genshin um, and essentially what I was saying is like, not really, cause you know, Fortnite exists, but so does Call of Duty. So does Valorant. Yeah. So does Rainbow Six Siege. Mm -hmm. Like there are other games that can exist in the space, um, Overwatch. And so the point is Kuro does not have to make Hoyoverse money to be successful. Yeah. They don't have to make, like the thing about it is, um, there's a three, uh, three word statement that would kind of clear all this up tower of fantasy mm. the thing about it is tower of fantasy is a game that is at the broader sense most people would say that that game failed right yeah. now i think it's fair to say that it did not meet the expectations that developers originally had 100%. but to say that it failed is not objectively correct because of the fact if anybody's been paying attention to the space they have a new game that they've been working on called neverness to everness like mm. the game is still going they're still getting new patches they're still getting new maps and on top of that they apparently had enough um success to warrant the creation of another game so yeah. if a game like tower of fantasy with the type of player base in terms of numbers and the type of revenue that it's been making can do all of that you it, there's really no argument in terms of weathering waves like yeah yes it didn't and like to go specifically with the most recent month um it, it didn't it's not making like hoyovers money but who, nobody's making more money except for hoyovers yeah but that doesn't mean that other games are like not doing well and in the same vein if another game has a really successful month even more successful than um hoyovers for example like a genshin or something like that that doesn't mean that genshin is dying yeah. like it's just like it's it's ebbs and flows um but the other part i was going to say just in particular what you were talking about i actually think it was very intelligent a very intelligent move on the part of koro to do what they did this patch mm -hmm. because let's be honest this was the patch that not long came out the biggest you know arguably the second biggest patch of any year for genshin the, yeah. the biggest patch is probably usually the archon and the second biggest patch is usually when the game uh drops a new region so it makes sense because 
like Kuro knows that there's people who play both games. They know yeah. that some of the people who play their game also play uh, other other Hoyoverse games, in particular, probably Genshin, because they're both open world. So they said, you know what we're going to do? Let's, since we know that this month is probably, if we dropped like a really insane character this month, people would have to decide between our insane character and the brand new, the hype of a brand new um, world and patch. So let's actually release a free character during this patch since we know that um our sales might get you know people will have to decide basically yeah um on this patch let's just put a free character out and from a monetary standpoint i think it's actually very intelligent because as cool as um shorekeeper is now and i'm gonna be honest i'm pretty sure if people were to compare shorekeeper and this is no disrespect but if people were to compare like shorekeeper to like kanish or mulani and i think the the designs um are solid designs yeah all across the board but Preble, especially the gotcha space, would probably say that Shorekeeper would be the better choice. But yeah. once again, it's yeah. just that it just makes financial se- business sense yeah. to release a free character on a patch that you know is a very high competition patch. Yeah, and and, and th- I just clocked while you were saying this. This isn't the second time that Kuro made a very business savvy decision. If you remember, <laughs> in the first month of the game before they released their um the, their fir- first update before 1.1 if you remember if you remember they actually mm-hmm. um brought forward yeah i'm pretty sure they brought forward um their plans to release 1.1 and drop yinlin and um the more story or whatever they brought that fa- uh, closer because I, I believe uh was it zenless was dropping Zen- yeah zenless dropped yeah yeah zenless dropped and and kuro are like okay we don't want to um directly compete head-to-head clash because a head-to-head aggressive clash wouldn't benefit them you know because they're still trying to mm-hmm. prove themselves because this is only after the first month so they did that and didn't interfere with the, uh, the drop of zenless um you guys on the channel know my um opinions on uh, zenless on zero uh to this day that's my most commented and most disliked video my review of zenless on zero it's, it's, still, yeah, it's still so funny reading going back and reading those comments um <laughs> people got their feelings hurt but um besides the point um kuro are really business bi- like aware they're aware of themselves they're aware of their position they're not th- i feel like everyone besides kuro are like oh kuro genshin but kuro is aware of the size of um of hoyo they don't want to directly compete and i feel like it, they're not credited for how smart they are and how they time their updates like everything seems like it's done for a reason if you get what i'm saying you know no absolutely um and at the end of the day like you can you know sit you know at your computer or on your phone and but the reality is these people are human beings who have families to feed yeah they don't have time to be worrying about you know gotcha wars or whatever (laughs) their focus is making sure that they their families are fed yeah and that their business is thriving yeah and any person with sense can look at that situation and say okay yeah this is the smaller company and at the end of the day whether you uh, whether you that doesn't make the game make it a better game just because it's a bigger company and it doesn't make it a worse game because it's a smaller company but at the same time it's just like they understand there is crossover there are people who play both of our both my game i'm about to say we know there's people at hoyoverse who play weathering waves we've yeah. seen it oh, we've seen like it. And, and i'm pretty sure there's people at kuro who play uh you know star rail genshin or zinless and so the reality is they're just like yeah this is about to be a really big like whether it was hoyoverse or not what like regardless of if, even if it was like arc knights or something yeah and it's like if they knew that arc knights shared a lot of people with their community they'd be like okay we know that you guys are playing this actually you know it's interesting um this is unrelated to gotcha but i think sometime back the director of final fantasy 14 mm-hmm. he literally said i think that they pushed if i if i recall correctly they pushed the update for 14 back because elden ring was about to drop oh yeah that was a smart and decision. he and he knew and he was like bro look i'm about to play it too <laughs> so <laughs> like yeah I'll be that, that's what one. i'm saying <laughs> like they oh they're not God. um they know like they're just like okay yeah we don't want to unnecessarily try to compete because i'm telling you even like in the fighting game community mm-hmm. um there were certain games that came out at just like horrible times and ended up getting like shadowed like literally 
put in the shadows because they were just released at the wrong time and the the opportunity that would have been amazing for them to have like a you know um some success mm. like it just that quick just because they released like i think the same week or a week after and instead of just kind of waiting for the hype to die down and then trying to get them so like you have to be smart um and i think i think decoro is uh they're doing the right thing in this scenario yeah um as far as as far as that's concerned you know how many people decide to spend money i will say one other thing though in terms of money and i think a lot of people don't recognize this koro specifically like punch and gray raven weather and waves it's cheaper to play these games than it is to play hoyoverse games 100 percent, 100 percent. i and agree with so you. people are is there one of the main one of the reasons one of the big reasons they're not making as much money it's not the only reason but i'm just saying as much is because the reason why your people uh hoyoverse and let's just say genshin in this example is making so much money now apparently in um not long they changed it uh which is like long overdue but people losing the 33 33 they like you could lose like two or three times on the weapon banner oh just to God. get a weapon oh my that's god that's where all that money is coming from wow. whereas with weather and waves you, it's guaranteed yep guaranteed. if you get it early like i just pulled on shang liao's weapon got it in a tin pool and it, it's guaranteed and so you don't have to spend as much money in weather and waves as you would some of these other games because it's just that much uh more free-to-play friendly or light spender friendly whatever like monetarily wise you it's a cheaper game to play yeah like yeah. to get a sequence six r5 weapon like somebody did the numbers like to get a sequence six r5 weapon um which is like fully maxed for everything in weathering waves versus uh, like genshin for example before they fixed up their weapon banner um slightly mm -hmm. um i think it was like like half a thousand or more less like it was like 500 or so Best. um dollars I mean, it might have been more than that honestly I, I could be wrong somebody can look it up but basically like it's a lot cheaper mm. to play weather waves so as a result that means people are spending less money on the game yeah and people seem to also forget yes at the start of the game there were hiccups like in every single game on the launch there's gonna be hiccups i've been covering gacha games for years man in every single launch i covered whether i'm streaming or playing on day one in chile and just chilling in discord there's always something going on whether there's game issues server issues um you know whether they don't promote the game enough there's not enough players you can't buy anything in the shop if you make purchases day one they charge you and they, they never deliver the items into your mailbox i've seen all oh, man every single gotch games like this so when people only single out uh Wuwa for doing this there's there, there's obviously an agenda agenda they're trying to push um but don't let's not forget all the free five stars that we got at the start of the game we got two free five stars um or more than that i can't remember i think we got two free selectors um we got yeah so it was the we got one that was just a straight up you can get them immediately mm -hmm. we had the choice selector mm -hmm. which is basically like after so many things you can get the character that you're trying to get yeah and then we also had the early like you know how like in every game there's like uh the beginner banner where it's like you're guaranteed to get the character within like the first 50 pulls or something like that yeah so it was like the it was the beginner banner it was a choice banner and then we got a selector so essentially you would have started the game off with at the very least three five stars um and, and I've said this before, people don't realize, like, getting these characters this early into the game's life, and to be honest, the same thing can be said for Shang Liao, getting the characters this early, like, the first year, literally two, three months into the year of, of the game's life, mm. is so much more valuable than people realize, because for other games, you could get a free character, like, after a year of playing the game. Yeah. But by that time, there's way more um, powerful characters. Oh. But because yeah. you get them this early, you're basically getting the strongest characters in the game mm -hmm. right. for free early. Yeah. It's Tell like the value that. proposition is totally different. Tell me about it with Star Rail. I think I only got my, you know, with the standard banner where you can select. Um, yeah, you yeah, can select yeah. yeah. I think that took me like a year. Took me about a year. Yeah, man. it does. It was calculated to take a year. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying that that was a bad thing. Like, you know, in the sense like, yeah, it's nice that, you know, you can get a free character. But I'm just saying yeah. the value proposition of getting 
like a you know a character like Branya or you know something like that day one Would have versus been a year later oh, or like yeah. Clara. It it's a totally different value proposition. Yeah. They're still both good. Yeah. But I'm just objectively speaking, it's a far better value proposition. Yeah. To get those characters. It's same with Shang Liao, like Doctor Ratio. Doctor Ratio is an insane unit. Like he's mm. a really strong mm. unit. But getting Doctor Ratio the first like in the first couple months versus getting him when we got him, like because at that point you know people already had um, uh, Don Hung and Bible de Lune, like Daniel as they call him. Yeah. And so it's just like, and you know, you might have like welch or whatever. So like I so said, the point is, it's just like, it's a totally different value proposition. And I think that is something that um, credit should be given. Yeah there's, so much, yeah, there's so much value in that, especially if you consider the fact that you and me talked about this multiple times. Um, like if you consider the power creep as well, there is no power creep. We, we had this discussion multiple times. There really is no power creep in Wuthering Waves um, if you deep it but like in games like Honkai Star Rail I'm, I'm referring back to that one because that's the the only other Hoyo game I ever played um I played Genshin for a bit but it wasn't it wasn't too serious but with HSR um the power creep is insane I actually went, went back to it to just try try it out the other day yo the power creep is insane and I spent uh, quite a bit of money on my account like they're actively power creeping units purposely and they're not even hiding the fact like all those all the standard units are like besides maybe one or two of them have a bit of value but the rest yeah, not 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 up there anymore you know and they're constantly releasing new things that 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 um that require you to summon for the latest characters you know you know that gimmick um but in withering waves there that isn't an issue so you can actually like build your your three three teams focus on building up your three teams start saving uh, accumulate your resources and then pull for whatever character you want so like you know it's not a big fear of power creep you know heck i saw someone the other day um does this ch can't remember this guy's channel but i stumbled upon his um his channel um his video sorry he, he he's about to hit um he so who soon hit rank 70 or something on wua and he's never summoned he's never wished he never he yeah never, yeah he, yeah he never, i've seen that he never yeah. uses selectors he never used anything um but only with the free four star free four stars that the game gives you for free and mm -hmm. with the uh rover he beat everything and he also maxed out tower of adversity yeah that was insane he maxed out tower of adversity heck i've spent like a grand on my account or more i even i even i haven't done that shit. i'm still like one or two stars off so if he can do it with only four stars and they're on the, on the mc like come on guys come on and then we're getting free selectors zhang liao like oh my god it's not even a comparison it's not even a comparison you know and speaking of that so like what's your what's your overall like feeling with the game like with the regards to the story of uh, the pacing with that um just the overall experience uh, yeah so um for those of y'all who may not know um i am i'm the lore guy um yep. um one amongst many mind you but that's kind of one of the things that i uh focus on like whether we're in the stream mm -hmm. um i'll do a video or two on lore as well uh the lore in weather waves is a little it's a very interesting thing um it, it exists uh, to a decent degree and to kind of go back to the live stream one of the things I'm very excited about is they're actually adding an archive Ooh. and so that archive is essentially a place where people can go to refresh themselves on like the key events that happened during the game yeah. as well as like uh, potential lore things that we might learn I don't know all of what it's going to look like but I'm just very excited because that's going to be something for people like myself um, I'm somebody who pays a lot of attention to the story long story short so uh, I pay attention to the story. I pay attention to how the story is um, paced. Um, I've seen some people's, you know, statements about it, and I think they could use a little bit of refining. Um, so this is what I will say. Okay. The story of Other Waves is it's very much in the genesis stage right now. Yeah. Um, one of the things about a, a, a solid story is usually what they do is they try to they do two things, right? Um, and I'm going to use um, an a very popular anime as an example. So there's an anime called One Piece. Uh, some people have seen it, some people have not. But yeah. for the, the people who have seen it and who haven't, this is kind of how One Piece will usually introduce like a new area, right? 
the first thing they do is they'll introduce you to the general world, right? So let's yeah. just say you go to a place and this place is based on uh, Rome, right? Ancient Rome. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go there and you're going to get exposed to the world. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, we have, you know, we have gladiator fights. You know, we have like really good food. We have, um, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, the, the, there's like waterways and things like that. And just like just different yeah, things. You kind of get true. exposed to the world. Yeah. So world building. Uh, the second thing that they'll do is they'll introduce you to the characters. It's like, OK, yeah, we have this character. This character is a um, a dancer on the street. This character is a gladiator. This character is a dictator yeah. or whatever. Um, this is the president. And so the third thing that they'll do. So you'll get the world building. You'll get the introduction to the characters. And then the third thing that they'll do is usually they'll introduce you to the well, I guess it's technically three, four, but it's the bad guy. Yeah. and the purpose okay. and if we were to look at weathering waves that is basically everything that's been happening so far yeah where it's been it's basically been a lot of world building so they introduced us to the world we know about like you know the lament the bad thing happened but if i were to ask anybody right now what is actually happening in weathering waves nobody can really answer that question because we don't actually know yet yeah like we don't know what we're actually there for we know we lost our memory but we're just kind of like, are we supposed to save, like, you know, destroy the lament? Are we supposed to, like, save people? Like, we don't actually have a, our job yet. And that's kind of the point where, like, everything that's kind of happened up to this point has just kind of been introducing us to the world, introducing us to the characters. And 1.3, and so for everybody who's watching this when uh, before 1.3 happened, I'm telling you all right now, the story is about to take a major shift. Yeah. Like, we're about to essentially get put on the road to everything that happens uh going forward so and you can kind of look at what we've had up to this point as a prologue and kuro is doing this smart in my opinion because they're not just thinking about the immediate they're thinking about the long term because for me for example when i was playing um or uh genshin i started the game a bit late i knew about it before it came out but i kind of forgot because you know COVID was like a lot of things were going on yeah so i played the game like a year or so um late uh, it was like uh, Labyrinth and Fog was like the banner. Uh, it was like Child's banner um, in, in Azuma. And so basically, I was playing it starting from the beginning all the way. I like had a bunch of content to do. And I think the thing that people don't realize is they're making this game so that when somebody plays it for the first time, it makes sense. Mm, because yeah. sometimes people are like, oh, no, like, I'm going to give you an example. 1.1. Um, Everybody loved 1.1 with Chang Li's story, right? Yeah, but people were. I've saw some people saying that it started off slow, and I was like, because because it, it's like a little slice of life moment, right? With um with Abby, and I was trying to explain to people that we just finished a literal war. Yeah, literally. Of course, like literally, because the thing is, for the, somebody who's playing the game, because for everybody else, you know, who was playing consistently, like you know, it's like okay, six weeks ago is when we, we if you did the story, yeah, at that, patch, you know, patch, when it first came out. I get you, yeah. Yeah, and so basically it's just like they, they want to just jump into something immediately. But it's just like Goro is looking at the whole thing. And for somebody who's like, if somebody starts the game right now and they're playing through it, they're going to do the war. And then you're expecting them to just, okay, that was a lot. And then just like immediately jump to um, Mount Firmament. It's like, no, there's got to be like some breather in cool between. It wasn't cool even like a period. long breather. Yeah, it wasn't cool even down. that long. It was yeah. like a 10 minute conversation. And then we immediately go to the next part, um, which I guess, you know, starts to get uh, to the meat and potatoes of it all. Also, we did learn something, but it's kind of like a lore thing that we learned about Abby. But the point is, it's just like, I think the way that they're pacing it currently, I think they're doing it right because they're yeah. not just doing it for like the immediate shock value. They're saying, we're trying to make a story that whenever a new person shows up, the story flows well. Yeah. Now, I will admit the beginning of the story was a little bit, um, it was a lot of talking and a little bit too much, too much lore dumping, but they definitely fixed it toward the latter parts of um, that first chapter. Yeah, 100%. And yeah, yeah going forward, um, I think, like I said, the game is about to take a very drastic turn, not even just in terms of the story, but also in terms of the aesthetic. Like Jinjo, let's be honest, like it definitely looks like it went through some stuff, but like it's still kind of like, it doesn't look as like dude like Deso Rock Highland, right? You know, where um 
the thundering memphis is where we get yeah, the yeah, yeah that's that, way darker yeah that's way darker than like jinjo and the, the the jungle and stuff and even the um the morning ikes's area the winding axis mire yeah um that like it looks you know it looks kind of like gloomy a little mm -hmm. bit um but i think as, as we're looking at black shores it's starting to show us a little bit more of like the type of um aesthetic that they're gonna Dagger, be good digging. Ominous. yeah i get you mysterious yeah. yeah and the developer um salon the ceo um of uh coral games yeah he said out of his mouth during an interview recently the perp the game is like about like it's very the, i can't remember word for word but i think he basically kind of said like the game is supposed to be about like not so much depression but just like mourning and mm. sorrow yeah and so it's like it's the calm before the storm yeah that's i think that's the best way i can explain it everything we've gotten up to this point is the calm before the storm and i think that they were making the right choice by not just trying to like shock factor every single thing yeah like but building it up so that you can actually appreciate it and for any like I say any new person when they join the game they'll be able to appreciate how that whole thing fits together yeah and real quick also i just wanted to add in is i feel like they it, like one thing we like you even me and you don't even consider haven't even considered i don't think anyone's considered is even the time it takes for a new update let's say a new big main update even the time mm -hmm. it takes to clear that we're talking what five six hours max not even more yeah than that, five, yeah, six yeah hours. sometimes more sometimes more well actually you're talking about story right yeah main story okay i'm gonna say because the actual gameplay and all that is way more but oh, yeah. yeah main story yeah it's usually like six to seven yeah but like you know what i mean we're like we're not really you're not just sitting there through cutscene 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 talking 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 like uh penaconi we know you <laughs> oh <my laughs> let's gosh. not talk let's not talk about how long that was um but like this act this act there's action in there obviously with the gameplay and, and let's not let, the gameplay is amazing you know it's engaging but, and the and the and the dialogue isn't so long that you, you're just gonna fall asleep um let's not like forget like they added the feature where you can skip a scene and then they'll have a, a summary for the entire scene so so like yeah so like for they, people who, yeah, yeah. And then if you then if you want you can go back through the archives that you mentioned and just read through everything binge through everything um so like i respect that they're respecting our time you know um and they're not just like what they're, what they're doing what a, a good example of what they're doing is quality over quantity that's basically what i think they're doing is oh 100 the the length of the story may not be 12 14 hours long like uh honkai star rail or hoyo but it's short gets to the point um no no messing around no 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 dialogue that that makes no sense because genshin yeah. ha genshin has that as well where die they'll just have dialogue for for just having dialogue sake everything's there for yeah. a reason um, you know what i've learned um recently about that and somebody feel free to fact check me and like i said i'm not here to like i'm not trying to like just trash talk or something i'm yeah, more so you. just speaking about my experience and um I mean, yeah, it's really just just has been my experience uh, with these things. Um, I don't mind long dialogue if it's actually, you know, purposeful. Yeah. But sometimes, like I said, it does sometimes feel like it hasn't been that purposeful. Yeah. And if you're somebody who feels like, you know, you prefer that sort of thing, that's totally fine. Because it's interesting. I, I've talked to some people and for the reasons what that I'm not a fan of something, they actually are. Yeah. And so, like I said, I can respect that. But um. One of the things that I learned was this. And when I found that out, I was like, wow. And like, somebody can fact check me. Apparently, over there, they're actually paid per word. Oh my God. They're paid. <laughs> so they're actually paid for quantity, not quality. Oh my God. You know what? That, you know what? That, that, exp that explains everything because there's sentences where they'd be like, let's just say, um, the, the rock is on that chair. The rock mm. is on that chair look at the chair a rock's on that chair like they'll just repeat the same thing over and do you over notice and how over the rock again. do you notice how the rock is settled upon that um that that seat oh, uh, like they'll say the same thing and then do like a metaphor about it yeah then almost talk like about, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god that this that reminds me from um, in college when they're trying to get like a report out or, or or um a report out and they're like oh yeah, it has it's to called be fluff sentences. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. Fluff. yeah it has to be like a thousand five hundred words or two thousand five hundred words whatever it is and let's say you're you're handing it late, maybe late submission or whatever and you're just there adding words in like those filler words and it 
You know, <laughs> if you know, if you guys know, you know. And by the way, you know that rock kind of reminds me of my parents. You know, because oh, yeah. they were very stern. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they yeah, always make. <laughs> yeah, then cue the flashback about that rock on on the seat, man. And, and oh like my cue the, God. Uh, the Naruto. <laughs> 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 oh my God, that's shameless of those guys, man. I mean, make your well, money, yeah, man. make your it, money. That's how it works. Like apparently, yeah. um, they actually get paid per word that they write. So there's actually an incentive for them to write more um, dialogue. And so, like, when I heard that, I was like, wow. So they actually are incentivized to do um, quantity over quality. Because in my mind, originally, and it's probably like a, a double a double situation where it's like both the fact that they're incentivized to do that. But the other incentive for this is just because, like I said, um, to keep people playing your game longer. Because if they're playing your game, oh. then that means they're not playing somebody else's. That's such a bad reason, man. That's such a bad reason because they don't know that 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 <laughs> will chase people away, man. I've played so many gacha games where games that don't respect your time, I like people don't respect games that don't respect your time. Like if there's not quality of life features, like a skip button, for example, which is one of the most basic 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 things in a game to have a skip feature where you can skip the dialogue but because they want you to sit there through every single bit of dialogue it's like they just don't respect your time um and what you said about mm. the thing with them getting paid for from having more words that's just a shameless 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 of them to do that um, i remember um, i think it was the anniversary last year yeah yeah, it was the anniversary last year because I actually put it in one of my videos on my other channel before it got deleted. And I I was like, wow, because I actually praised Zenless Zone Zero for this because Zenless, um, at least as far as in the main story is concerned, they're very succinct. Like they don't really waste immense words a lot. Um, and I praised them for that when I gave my review of it. I was like, the main story is actually very um, like to the point. Uh, it's honestly has been one of my favorite parts about that game um and i remember that for genshin's anniversary last year they actually and for those of y'all who were watching you were by remember they actually put on the screen how many lines of dialogue and they were like saying like as an achievement they're like oh we God. had so and so thousand lines of dialogue Hey. And so and so thousand like, and I was like, "Yo, I don't think this is the flex that you guys think it is." Yeah, this is but... that 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 just shows their guilty conscience. They're like, "Oh, we were we were purposefully adding those extra hours onto our story." But hey, guys, look, we're not doing it this time. Look at this good thing. Like Tech Don says it all the time. They'll they, they'll create a problem to fix the problem to say that we fixed the problem and to to to, to you know what I mean? Like, it, like oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's to try and get praise. But, but like you know what i mean it's like brownie points and stuff but like it's just not mm -hmm. genuine it's just not genuine um we so real quick just to summarize um the, the game how long has this boo even been out four months uh yeah it came out in um gosh what was it was it may uh yeah yeah it was may yeah yeah i think yeah it was like was it like may 11th or 14th or 16th it was somewhere in like the middle of may if i recall correctly yeah um so yeah, it's been about like uh what May, June, July, August, September. Four yeah, or five yeah, months. Yeah, wow. It's like yeah, it's been about five months, like a yeah. little bit over five months. It's been five um, months. Out of ten, what would you give your rating for for the game so far on how it's been handled? So far, uh, how it's been handled. Um, like I said, obviously, like I said, there were some problems at the very beginning of the game, um, and that's just kind of you know on those unfortunate things about uh crunch and things of that nature mm -hmm. um long story short i'm just saying i have to be equal across the board even though i don't like it i don't like yeah. it for the developers either but it's like i have to be equal that i yeah. know that happens with a lot of other developers as well so i can't hold that solely against them yeah if i'm reading it across the board so um i would say considering once again some games aren't for everybody i know some people aren't really big fans of open world games yeah, but if you fair. are somebody who's an interested in an open world game uh with like you know anime aesthetic action combat and an interesting story um i would say that the game is rocking around a solid eight mm, at that, this point yeah. i would put it as I, to be honest considering how free to play friendly it is i'd probably bump that up to like an 8.5 yeah, I was saying, I was going to say 8.5 to 9 is where I probably give my rating. 
um the the last bit like the one is just because i don't believe in perfection in games i i don't yeah, i don't believe, i don't believe in perfection in general i feel like um you can always improve you can, you can always improve there's there's always room to improve so even the nine i don't i think it's a bit too much i feel like 8.5 8.7 somewhere in, in the middle there is fair you know the only issues were like okay at launch there were some issues some bugs this happens in every game maybe there's some issues mm-hmm. with the mobile versions this happens in every game so like, i feel I like, would bump yeah. mine up by the way once we get a new area like a like a full new map new area. yeah 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 because hey, like i said i'm thinking about it from the perspective of a new player because mm. that's who we're talking to we're not talking to players who are already playing the game mm. we're talking to people who have not tried the game yet when we when we get these ratings like we, we're talking to the people who play the game but like the rating is for the person um yeah. who's not played the game oh, the, because when yeah. i say my rating and somebody else who's played the game like yeah yeah i agree like and i would say that too like then somebody's gonna look and say like okay so the people who actually play this game are giving it this rating and so i would say once we get like a full new area not so much black shores mind you it is gonna be a new area it's gonna be awesome yeah. but i'm talking about like a new like big area um then i would probably especially depending on how they do it and where, where the story goes at that because like it's it's kind of hard to like fully um rate something at the beginning you know yeah and so i feel like after you know however long it takes to get to 2.0 and i'll just leave it at that mm-hmm. however long it takes to get to 2.0 um once we get there then i'll feel like i'll have like a very solid um because i'm sure i have a feeling that the story is going to be in a really good place or at least the place where they're, they're trying to get it whether it's good is going to yeah. be you know for us to find out but once it gets to the place that we're, they're trying to get it to um that is when i will be able to kind of say like okay no this is a solid you know like nine out of ten experience mm-hmm. and the nine just being like you know i'm not gonna give it perfection um until like you know yeah, I get you. Much later in their life cycle, I'll I'll consider going above nine. Um, mm. But yeah, like I said, I think it's I think it's solid. I just think, I, like I said, um, they're improving like a lot of stuff. I think one of the pe- things people were talking about, like, oh, they need to market the game more. I this is my personal opinion. I actually think what they were doing is a good idea by not marketing it as much. And the reason why I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out, because the, I think that they were really just trying to fix a lot of the bugs. And like I said, all this, like the quality of life stuff that they did this patch, because the thing is one of the issues with uh, PGR where people say, well, why don't I market PGR more? Because unfortunately the beginning experience for PGR is not that good. Like the game Mm. itself is cool. It's a fun game. The combat's great. The story gets better much later, unfortunately. And so the thing is that they're spending all this money to market that game. The problem with it is that they're going to be marketing it to a brand new person and that brand new person is probably not going to play the story long enough to be invested because the beginning is so slow mm. and i think they're trying to fix that this time around where they're like okay we want to make sure that we get all the bugs out of the way first you know release this game on ps5 whatever and that way it's in a solid uh, position for us to like really market it because the thing is that they were trying to market it the way that some people want them to market it yeah. imagine if they were spending because marketing is like some of the most expensive stuff in, oh, yeah. in gaming yeah it is yeah imagine all that money is going into marketing yeah and, and the I, game yeah. has bugs yeah i remember and we all remember the, that launch and how like all the me, all the flaws and with that launch so th- they say they saved themselves a lot of money not marketing super crazy um before the yeah it's like drop. let them fix the bugs first yeah it get like the, like these quality of life updates that people are going to ask for because you only make you can only make a first impression once and yeah. so it's like they okay they got the first round of people in you know playing the game and hopefully enjoying the game um you know in the first round yeah and now they're kind of let me be honest let's just be honest in these gotcha games especially in the beginning we're all basically beta testers yeah. like we're basically testing the game out figuring out the bugs for them so they can fix them and then once that is situated then they're probably going to start marketing the game far more because they're like okay we've done we we've, we've fixed all the problems the ui is good now we can just focus on making new stuff for the game yeah so i think honestly that is my opinion as to why they have not marketed it as much because it's like i would prefer them to spend most of their money and resources on quality of life first and then once the quality of life is up to snuff spending um that those that time and resources yeah on marketing. and and we remember in the beginning uh with all the bugs they and when they gave us all that compensation they said that they'll strive to 
So I remember it was one of the first patches. They said that they'll they'll work to improve the game every patch. They'll constantly work on updates, and we're constantly um, getting patches. Uh, even sometimes they'll patch stuff. And like I don't know if you remember, they, they sometimes they were even patching stuff without telling us, and then they were apologizing. Mm. For, for, they were literally apologizing for fixing sh fixing bugs, and they gave us mm. compensation for 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 not telling us that they were fixing stuff. Like they, it, the generosity is really good. Um, and the loyalties there as well they're not just talking they're they're really about it you know like i've seen so many games say oh we're gonna work to do this we're gonna work to fix this and they barely ever communicate with the community they barely ever do everything anything and they fix stuff that aren't really big issues but they have consistently and you, you, got, you guys can go back and check go through the the the, the, the past or history or whatever every single update there was a even the smaller updates but every single update they were fixing so many things so many quality of life additions fixing so many bugs making so many changes to just improve the overall experience consistently every single update every single uh patch update i covered on the channel some so i may have missed one or two but every single patch up there i covered there was always something being fixed and obviously with the same with the black shores it's going to be even more um quality of life more fixes i'm super excited life is super excited um and i'm sure new players new players are gonna flux there's gonna be influx of new players coming in with this black black shores update one million percent because bro think about all the content that they have at their fingertips once they once they start oh, yeah, it's all really the content they can just go through all that content um experience it all um i'm super excited for 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 black shores man i'm super excited um yeah I remember you were asking me a question as well. Um, essentially, you were kind of saying like in the vein, like with all the quality of life updates they've done. I remember you were kind of asking me like, what do I think they, they like at this point? What do I think still needs improvement? Yeah. And essentially for me, I think um, there's two things in particular that I would like to see. Okay. Uh, the, the first thing is I would like to see a log a conversation log so basically like while you're like listening to like a like you're watching a cutscene listening to a conversation basically having something in the corner of the screen um star rail has this genshin just recently also implemented it yeah. um just in case somebody thinks that i'm just hating just to, like out of nowhere and i'm not you know like there are 100 percent things that both uh games can learn from each other 100 whether it's those games or whatever 100%. and so um the, a, a conversation log i would appreciate that so that way like if maybe you miss something or they say something like wait what did they just say didn't they just say something about this you can like hit you know l1 or whatever and um whatever it is on your uh mouse and keyboard or on your phone just some some little icon that allows you to go and look at the conversation yeah that was just happening just in case maybe you missed something um the second thing i would like and now i know what the um they allow for the like the data merge uh of echoes yeah that feature what I would like for them to do, because the data merge is a cool system, but sometimes, like at least for me, I will just be like, I'll have so many, um, especially if you're doing, you know, if you're consistently doing the tacit fields, or if you're just out in the open world. Uh, right. There's this system where you basically um, can merge the echoes, and I would prefer if they had another system where you could basically like destroy the echoes but get shell credits in return yeah <laughs> that is an issue because the stuff gets expensive man it gets really expensive and considering you need to build up three teams and maybe two or three extra units maybe even four teams because if you consider it flex units that you want to slot uh swap around or whatever like you're gonna need a lot of shell credits guys you're gonna need a yeah. lot of shell credits trust me even as a whale like i i literally sometimes will just so i can go and convert my stuff into into shell credits that's how down bad i am uh for shell credits so this is a big issue i 100 percent agree with that because the stuff is so expensive and things they've actually um made things cheaper i don't even know if you remember they actually worked on the shell credits and how expensive things used to be they've made things a lot cheaper but there's still an issue with the shell credits um but yeah and i mean like fortunately you can get them through like uh like you know um the elusive realm and uh they put them in there like they, they do have other ways to get them but it's just like i said yeah. things are just they're just still they're pretty expensive 
And like I said, I just think it would be a nice little thing. It's not like it has to be like a huge amount. Oh yeah, not but huge like amount, yeah. if if you, for example, destroy a hundred echoes, right, or convert, you know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, convert a hundred echoes. Um, like yeah, like maybe you can get like fifty thousand shell credits or something. Because like a hundred echoes, that's not like a small amount. Or if it's not fifty, y'all know thirty thousand. I don't know. Yeah, just something. like it'll be, it'll be nice. Um, just have like a little incentive. And just especially for me, because like sometimes I just like running around the world and beating stuff up. Um, mm. And so it would be nice to like not feel like I'm punished for doing that because I ended up like filling up my data bank too quickly. And I, like I said, the hundred merge uh, option definitely will help with that. But like I said, I'd li- I just personally, yeah, it would be nice it'd if be nice. there was that other option. Yeah, hundred percent. I I agree, bro. I agree. Um, so that's pretty much everything we've covered um for this video we've been talking for about 50 minutes this is gonna be a long video guys but hey lots of facts lots of interesting topics and talking points were brought up in this video i feel like we've 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 covered every single big thing um regarding Mm. the community in this video so i think it's cool that's a long longer video because there's just so much to talk about especially with the upcoming update um so you know let me know what you guys think about the video in the comments make sure to subscribe to life um i'll make sure to put his uh link to his channel in the in the description uh make sure to subscribe to him he's a good uh good friend good content creator make sure you subscribe Respect. to him appreciate you um and um yeah any, any f- leaving thoughts that you wanna <laughs> you wanna say um yeah i guess i'll just say thank you again for having me uh hopefully you know something that was shared today is of benefit um maybe you know hopefully we gave you all something to think about uh maybe a new perspective and a new way of thinking about uh Mm. like some of the things you may have come into contact with um in the community and uh all in all like i said i'm very excited about the future of weathering waves Um, i'm hoping that koro can take this game and you know swing it in a very uh positive direction for the community um i think they've already set a lot of positive precedents you know um in terms of just like competition being good for everybody yeah and i like i said i just hope that they keep going in that direction i hope that they don't get too uh, i hope they're able to in in many ways become a a good example for a company who in the space that is not only doing things solely out of like obviously they're a business at the end of the day but i've seen like a lot of very pro-consumer decisions being made and i hope that those uh continue and that that would be a example to other companies because the opposite of that is not something that you want to see long term because uh you can burn people out yeah 100 percent. i've seen that i've seen that myself um so ww kuro um well, I'm sure I'll, I'll be streaming 1.3 um, uh, day one of, of the of the patches update. Uh, I'm, yeah, sure, yeah. I'm sure life life might be streaming. I will you be streaming. Yeah, yeah, I will be. I've been, I've been taking a little bit of a break um, from the channel, so if you all were to go to my channel, you might see hasn't been that many uploads. But I will be returning for 1.3. Um, also covering other other games as well, not mm, only yeah. Weathering Waves. Um, but like I said, if you are somebody who does see my content, then you'll also kind of figure that out. Um, but yeah, 1.3, very excited about it. Um, I'm probably going to make a lower video uh, because 1.3 is going to be absolutely chock full of it. So mm-hmm. that'll be coming out at some point in the future as well. So yeah, come oh, yeah. by, say hello. Um, we're, we're friendly. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and peace. Peace.